Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm your host, Dorian B, also known online as BD3D. I'm the founder and lead developer of the SCAT5 plugin for Blender. And today in this new video, we will learn how you can create and save your own biomes in SCAT5. And before starting this video, let's talk about the part two of the ArcViz tutorial we did a few months ago. Uh, we were about to speak about how to create composition and lightning in Blender. And unfortunately, Blender compositing editor is about to drastically change in the very near future. So in order to avoid teaching soon to be obsolete knowledge, we are delaying this tutorial until further notice. So let's get it started. In this video, we are going to assume that you already have scattered systems in your scene ready to be saved in your biome manager to reuse them later or share them with your collaborators. Here I'm currently using an example file available on our documentation website. About credits, the vegetation models are made by Pialak Nunchim. It's licensed under CC BY and available on Sketchfab. And the animated character is called May, which is made by CGR.com and is also licensed under CC BY and available on Sketchfab. I am currently using SCADA 5.1 for Blender 3.1. If you're using a later version of our plugin, well, don't worry, the interface and the workflow is still very similar, I'm sure. So, first thing first, you will go in the system lists and select the layers that will be in your future biomes, okay? The selection is very important here. And then we are doing a little detour because I want to show you the folder where we store our biome. To do so, go in your biome manager, go in the header and click on file, and then open library. This will open a new file explorer window where we store your scatter library. This library contains a lot of external information used by our plugin. For example, there are the presets file used by the scatter preset operator. There is the market folder, which is weekly updated to show what biomes pack are currently available online. And there is the biome folder, of course, which contains all of your biomes. We will open this folder right now and we can see that each subfolder inside the biome folder represents your different categories. And you can actually rearrange your categories if you'd like. So let's continue creating our biome. And please, I want you to leave this file explorer window open. In order to save the selected systems as a new biome, I will click on Create New Biome and a new dialog window will pop up. You will be able to choose a name for your biome. To choose the export directory, you will see that by default it will be in your biomes folder and you are able to directly choose a new subfolder if you'd like. And then you click on Next Step and there are a few options. For example, you are able to export your display settings. By default, this export function will save the assets needed by the biome in a new generated blend file, meaning that if you save 20 biomes, you will end up with 20 blend files. However, you can choose not to do so with the following option. You'll be able to encode the name of an existing centralized blend file that you'll place yourself in your biome library. And then on the next page, we have a few more settings such as use random seed values and D to make sure that the seed values of each generated layers of our biome will be unique. We have create unique textures, which should be always toggled by default, except if you are saving a biome that have a multi-user texture data. And we also have random texture translation, as the name suggests, it's for randomizing the translations of a pattern slot. And finally, you can fill few basic information and simply press OK to save the biome. Note that if you have scattered linked assets in your file, you will not be able to save these scatter systems as a biome. The export as biome function we have do not support linked assets. And that's it, our biomes has been saved and it's ready to be used already. And if we open back our file explorer window, we can see that a new subfolder has been created. 
Inside, you will find a new blend files, which are the objects used by the biome. We can see new presets files, which contain the settings information of each layers of the biome. And the dot biome file is a generic set of instruction telling SCAT5 how many new scatter layers it shall create, with which settings presets, what instances coming from a given blend file. Because the biome files rely on names, you shall avoid renaming your generated blend file or assets contained within this blend file. Otherwise, we'll just not find what it's looking for. Speaking of searching, Scatterfile will first try to search for blends in the current folder. If not found, it will try to search everywhere in the Scatter library. And if not found again, it will check for external path that you can set up in your plugin preferences. If we go back in our SCAT5 biome manager, we can see that per biome item, there is a little option menu. In this menu, we can find a rename operator. Okay, so if you want to rename a biome, please use this operator. We also have an overwrite option, and it's useful when you just create an, a biome that you are not happy with and you'd like to redo it. For your information, a .presets or .biome file is only but a text file. It's a JSON format and you can actually open this file in a text editor. You are able to directly open this file in your text editor from the biome menu. If you'd like to remove a biome, well, it cannot be done from the SCAT5 plugin. Uh, we believe it's not our role to delete stuff from your computer you need to manage your library yourself. You just created a magnificent biome and you are happy with it. Uh, great, now you need an icon, right? If you'd like to render it yourself, you can just add a JPEG file with the same base name as the biome in your library. However, we do propose an icon generation functionality in the biome item menu. Just choose a blend scene with an emitter and a camera and in the background, we will run this blend file scatter the biome on the emitter and render a nice icon automatically for you. There is even an option to batch generate all the missing icons and you can even abuse this functionality to create a full resolution gallery of your biome pack, for example. Repeat this process and at some point you will have a good collection of custom biomes in your library. And perhaps you'd want to share them with your collaborators, your friends, or even sell them or share them for free. In order to easily share and install biomes, we created the scat pack format. And here is how you can create your own scat pack if you'd like. In a compressed zip folder, add the main biomes folder, which will contain all of your custom biomes with their presets and blends. Then rename the .zip extension to .scatpack and your biomes will be easily installable by any user that way. If you'd like to share your scatpack with the whole scat community, that you believe that you did a good job with the models and have a nice presentation, then don't hesitate to contact us on the Blender Market. We could add your scatpack to the available online gallery and inform the users about your creation. And that's it, folks. Now you know everything about creating your own biomes in SCAT5. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact us on our Blender Artist forum thread. Please subscribe for more and see you soon.